Nintendo Switch Lite. Let me show you what's going on. And we have some pretty nasty port damage in there. Uh, those top three pins, at least two of them were touching. We definitely would not want to plug power to this because it would very uh, high uh, potential for doing uh, collateral damage. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to disassemble this switch. We're going to have to remove that port and then we're going to have to do our testing afterwards because it would be fruitless to test with those pins touching in the port. So that's what we'll do. Disassemble, take off the port and go from. This video is brought to you by PCBWay. PCBWay now offers one-stop solution. One-stop solution is a turnkey manufacturing service that includes design, development, PCBA, and supply chain management. Find out more details about one-stop solution at PCBWay.com. Check out my associates link in the description for a $5 coupon to apply to your first order. Now back to our repair. Okay, we have the board out of the housing and we're preparing to remove the port. But before we do that, let me throw up my expected temperatures for this job. As always, they are subject to change if the job changes, but I don't expect it for the switch light. And these temperatures are brought to you by the Amazon associate links in the description. If you click on any of those links and buy any of the equipment or buy anything during that session, a small portion of that purchase will go to supporting the channel. We greatly appreciate it. It will not cost you an extra dime. All right, switch you back to microscope. And we've added some flux. The next thing we're going to be doing is low melting the anchors. I'm just going to low melt the anchors. I am a fan of the magic of low melts. I think people will know. Oops, I bridged something there. I don't want to be bridged. Pretty sure. Let's clear that off. There we go. Alright, let's bring the sauce and remove our port. Okay, nice clean pull. That is good. Make sure we have no bridges on the other side. Alright, that is good. The reason why we don't want bridges on the other side is because we do not want anything interfering with our testing, which we're about to begin. I'm going to connect our meter. We'll be testing in continuity here. And we will begin around the N92T36. Find ourselves a ground point. Okay. And now we're going to be testing the lines going to these capacitors. Or from these capacitors to the chip. And they should not be short. And that one is. And that one is. That one is not. And that one is not. Okay. And that one's fine. So we do have a shorted M92T36. We're going to have to deal with that problem. Let's check our BQ24193. And it appears to be okay. Very good. So our problem. So additional to the port problem, we also have an M92T36 problem. Probably means somebody stuck power to that bad port at one point. Not a big deal, but we are going to have to deal with this problem. What we're going to do here is we're going to remove the chip and then we're going to test and make sure our shorts have been relieved. If the uh, shorts do not get relieved, there will be no point in continuing. 
Let us test again. We'll just use the center pad as our ground point. Very good. No more shortage. Very good. All right, shorts are relieved. That's a good sign. We wet the solder. We're looking for the center pad to wet. Okay, and now we want the, the solder to grab the chip before we release it. Okay. Surface tension will do its job. Let it dry for a second. Now we'll press down and we wet. Remove the heat. And hopefully we are in place. Not perfect on this side, but all connected. Just do it there. Let's get there. Sorry it's so dark on the video and looks good there okay should be adequate let's start clean up with wicking as always you want to glide you don't want to scrub it's not a you know steel mesh brillo pad or anything of like of that nature you just want to skate it across the solder more or less be more careful around those pads than i would just was gone good gone bad Alright, turn the pads. For that, you just want to put a bead of solder on there and just kind of run the bead of solder over the pads. You don't really have to make much contact. We're reasonably prepped for a new port. So now we need uh, to modify our Nintendo Switch port. Uh, unfortunately, they, you cannot actually get a hold of Nintendo Switch Lite ports. Specifically, I mean you can if you want to get a pool, but uh, yeah, I don't like to get pools 
because you know I while I trust my pools I I don't you know I don't know what methods other people are using so we will have to shave down our Nintendo Switch port and I will grab one and show you where I shave it down to so so when I'm shaving down the Nintendo Switch ports I use these uh, tabs right here as my guide if I get pretty close or right on to those tabs as far as length uh, that's usually good for uh, getting the back cover of the Nintendo Switch Lite on. You can get it on over this lip, but you will almost you will play hell getting it back off if you have to reopen that Switch Lite. Uh, so I do not recommend just using the regular Switch unmodified port. I recommend shaving it down with a Dremel and going for that. So we'll be back once I have it shaved down. Okay, we're back and we have shaved down the port. I had to do a little bit of cleaning of of the port because there were some, you know, slivers and stuff like that hanging off of it. So, but anyway, as you can see, we've gone down pretty much to those tabs on both sides. You know, not quite to it, but enough, close enough. And it should do the job nicely. generous amount of flux and we'll run it over the pins no need to make general contact with the iron we just want to run it the solder solder ball over and we can place our port now I need to put into place our protection for these connectors what I'm using is an iPhone shield with some extra protection a uh, pad and this copper and that is usually done a pretty good job of protecting because well, I am just going to use my normal switch method or my normal method for placing the port the purpose of the rapid air movement is two things we're bringing up the temperature of the board and we are moving the air you're never keeping the air in one place long enough to burn anything or melt anything like the plastic on this port. We're concentrating pretty well in the uh, pad area though. That will be the first place to get the hottest. But it will be the board that's uh, doing the most of the work rather than the direct heat. Okay, we're starting to see wetting. The switch actually, I mean the port actually shifted into place. We're going to concentrate a little while longer just to make sure we get those hidden pins good. And we're going to press down and move our heat, holding down the port while it dries. And what I mean by drying is watching the solder. We want the solder to dry. And hold it down a little longer just to make sure we got those hidden joints as well. Okay, and now we're going to do our little nudge test. It's very gentle, but it should not give have any play. If only one row is soldered, you'll get a little bit of play when you do this test. But it feels absolutely solid, which is excellent, which means we got both rows. All right, and let's remove our shield. Sure we did not burn any connectors and we did not excellent that shield is very hot okay let's check our outer ones sometimes when you're concentrating on the on the inner row you can neglect this outer row so just to make sure they're all solid and soldered and it looks good very good all right, after a little bit of rapid cooling, those of you who don't know what the rapid cooling is, is a term Lewis Rossman uses for putting the board up against the fume extractor and letting it basically suck off the heat. All right, let's solder our anchors. We're on good feed through here, so don't be shy. And 
and it looks reasonably good. This one's a little less than ideal, but it's probably fine. You can see the solder from the other side, so that'll be fine. Okay, I am going to clean this up off of screen because I definitely want to get a thorough cleaning of that port before we apply power to it. We did shave, you know, there could be metal shavings in there that I'm not seeing. So we're going to clean it off real thoroughly, then blow it out real thoroughly with the air, air compressor and we should be good to go. And I'll come back when we're ready to perform tests. Okay, we're back and we're ready to perform the test. Let's take a look on the left hand side of your screen. We're watching that meter. We just want to see some behavior that looks like. Oh yeah, that looks normal. Back to zero. Very good. Let's try the other side. That looks good. We will grab our battery squid, modified iPhone battery squid. We have retrofitted switch and switch light batteries too. Battery connectors too, rather. We will grab our OEM charger to activate. And now you're looking at the right hand side of your channel. Just want to see a normal boot sequence. A normal booting current steady increase is what we want to see and that looks good to me very good excellent it appears we have a functional switchboard but we won't know for sure until we get it all back in the housing and perform some testing so we'll be back once we are prepared okay we're back up and running on its own battery we're only about five percent so but as you can see on that meter there we are fast charging and we will swap it around to the other side make sure we're fast charging on both sides and we are excellent our controllers are working let's go into settings and we are we're picking up our networks excellent grab our game it is not on the system I guess we can show you not on the system There it is now. They picked it up. Excellent. That's all I need to know. And that's really going to be it for this repair. Uh, there is no dock test or anything to perform. So, uh, in summary, we had a Nintendo Switch Lite with a bad port. Uh, the port had some touching pins. It looks like somebody tried to apply power to it after busting those pins. Because when we got in there, the M92 was short you know, in several places. So we removed the M92 T30, well, first we removed the port, we did the testing, found the M92 T36 short, uh, replaced the M92 T36, uh, making sure that we had relieved the shorts first, and then put a new port on. We had to modify the port as always. I have to grind it down to size so that the back cover will fit on this. Uh, it will fit on there without grinding it down to size, but you will have to play hell getting that back cover back off once you get it on there. Uh, so I recommend, you know, grinding it down to size. And that's really it for this repair. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to post them below and I'll do my best to answer them uh, or drag you somewhere that can answer them. I appreciate you watching the videos and I appreciate the channel support and we'll see you next time.